Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope this finds you well. Today it's, uh, it's starting to be more cold here. Um, uh, it's starting to be cooler here in Egypt. So uh, this is why I dress up more. And of course, today is about humor. So I guess I dress up like a clown. So uh, today um, is the 101 <coughs> of the um, alignments. And it's a special code because uh, all the gatherings that we did for 11-11, like yesterday, the ones that we did in Argentina in 2011 and 2018, where uh, because we we're all guided by an intraterrenal, then an inner uh, city of the world, and they they had this code, which is a bar circle bar, like one hundred and one, uh, and that's the code of the portal that they use um, to communicate with with the people. So um, today, uh, today we are connected with. 101 after the portal of 1111 so it's all perfect and also one of the messages that they used to say to us in those days was uh laugh humans laugh which is also related with the topic for today which is humor so um i wrote about this in the blog today um but um i just wanted to to point about this which is that um this beings in the days 11 11 they remind us about laughter because it's not only important for our culture for our um for ourselves to be or to feel like happy when we do things um it's not only about emotion but it's also about it's also about calibration calibration because uh, our physical body is needs and finds balance through humor okay? and uh, the energetical bodies too they find coherence and balance through the laughter so uh, to laugh is not only to feel fine but it's also to uh, to align ourselves hmm? that would be okay well so laugh humans laugh so let's begin by humor, from where humor comes from. Something important to, to understand about uh, humor, the origin of the word humor. The origin of the word humor comes from human. And remember that human comes from, um, from wetland, okay? So water and, and earth, so it's like mud, clay, from what we are done. In the mythology, they say humans are made of clay or mud, okay? That's why we are humans, because we come from the wet lands, wet lands. So because of this, in ancient mythologies and philosophies, they, they said, they thought that we, as humans, were made from um, hum humidity, okay? So all the things that we have inside are, are different types of, um, of wet lands. And these different wetlands that we have inside, these uh, are four. Uh, one is the um, is the blood. The other one is the phlegm. The other one is the black bilis, and the other one is the yellow bilis. <coughs> bilis, bilis. I don't know how you say it. So these are the through the, the four uh, um, wetlands of our body, which are the four humidities of our body. This is why in Rome they call it the four humors four humors okay so uh many years later a physician from the roman empire he said that it should be another one and this new liquid the wet land is in the lungs and the lungs are the one that breathe and breathing in um in in latin you may say spirare and spirare is the origin of the word spirit Okay, in that time, the concept of, of spirit um, wasn't really used. They used the concept of soul. Okay, so the soul in the Greek language, we call it psyche. And psyche is the origin of the word psychology. 
okay, psychology, psychiatrist, all the psych, psych, psycho, psycho, okay, all these words are related to soul, okay. So he said the soul is breathing, so this should be the fifth essence, the quintessence, they call it, and the fifth essence of the body, the fifth uh, wetland would be the lungs that they call pneuma, pneuma. So here is the fifth wetland that we call the fifth humor. And that's the humor of the soul. Psyche is the fifth humor. So this is how the people start to attach the concept of, um, of humor to the, of humor to the, um, uh, to the attribute of the soul, to the wetlands, the humidity of the soul, which is emotions. Mm -hmm. So this is how we now call humor the different attributes of the soul. Okay, but now we see the whole history of how it became that. So um, I guess it's very important to understand the origin of humor, uh, as I am explaining now, because we are talking about humor in the aspect of the soul in um, in Scorpio, in the energy of the Scorpio. <clears throat> so um, remember that Scorpio is, this, is the zodiac sign that is related with the dark water, the one that is um, uh, holding all the, the dark uh, emotions, everything that we have inside that we cannot see, the invisible. Uh, so the dark waters, the dirty waters the, the, that are uh, Scorpio. So if we understand the origin of the word humor, we will understand that since the very beginning, the mood of the soul was related to the dark waters that we have within. That would be. So another important thing to understand that if we understand that humor basically is talking about the waters that we have inside that gives us life, so humor is is very important for us to keep to keep living to live basically acknowledging that the the humors are part of the body and the body is trying to survive we have to understand that the four human the four humors that we have inside are related to the physical body okay and then we have another one the last humor that is related to the soul and we have to remember this that the body is um, the body believes that it is limited and the the energetical body believes it's eternal so our et ethereal aspect the energetical aspect wants one thing wants the transcendence while the body looks for survival okay so the body tries to hold everything and survive and the energetical one the soul is trying to expand and transcend totally different paths so in the physical body we have four different humors trying to make the body survive as much as possible and the other one the only one for the soul is the one trying to transcend what we do in our daily life everything that we do living uh, biologically in our history is absorbing information constant information but all that information that we receive is storage in our inner waters because the mostly 70 percent of all the information that we have inside is from the subconscious so it's the deep waters of the subconscious related to scorpio the rest the unconscious and the conscious are very tiny compared to the big the big amount of information that we hold in the subconscious which, which is the dark waters from within so all the information that makes us be what we are is in those waters so what happens that the 70 percent of our mind is trying to survive constantly because the four waters will try to do everything as possible to keep us alive so it will use uh it will use all this data all this information from around to uh, in its own benefit, which is survival. Hmm? So basically what the subconscious would do is to earn energy and to save energy. We have spoken about this. 
we have spoken about about um, storage energy. So what the body is trying to do is, if there is any problem outside, if there is any conflict uh, in the in the outer world, if it if it doesn't deserve my attention because it's not a specific problem that I would have, so my body will say, "Don't touch it, don't worry about it. I won't waste any energy in that conflict if it is not mine." The soul says. Oh, but I want to solve this problem. I want to go and do something and transcend and to prove and to learn. But it's only one against four. <clears throat> okay, these other four inside, these other four humors are trying to make you survive and be safe as possible. So any conflict around, it's not my problem unless it's really, really my problem and I have to put energy on it. So, um, Imagine this, that um, our body basically doesn't want to, to waste energy in anything because it wants to survive. But our brain was designed to solve problems. So our brain is saying, I need something to solve. I need something to find balance, to, to find equilibrium. But the body says, I don't want. I just want to sleep, to stay calm, and not do anything that is not for me. So what is our brain doing? It takes the mind and uses the mind to create parallel realities, okay? So it could solve problems in different realities which are not real. It's just an illusion. So the brain starts to design solutions, problems that doesn't exist. This ability that the brain has to create different realities that are not true is basically the main key that makes us be what we are, humans. Humans are able to create, to be creative. This is the basis of every culture, of every religion, of every society, every science, every discovery, every art, everything is basically trying to solve problems that are not real. And that's basically the most important thing that we have the invention, the ability to create. So this ability is the one that, that can create a thousand solutions for only one problem. Because the brain creates a thousand problems that are being solved at the same time. And that's what makes us be intelligent. And one of those main uh, attributes of the mind is humor. Because humor is the ability to create parallel, parallel realities. It's the ability to create realities or situations that are not real by, by themselves. So when I say about humor, remember that we have five humors. So it's not just to make jokes and laugh. It's about maybe my humor is really bad. I am really angry all the time, um, choleric, uh, melancholic humor. We have five. So in each one of these five humors, I can create parallel realities. And this is what starts to create all the different types of moods, of humors. So remember that there are four humors that, that looks for survival and one humor that looks for transcendence. This four humors that are trying to make us survive are the four humors that create parallel, parallel realities in order to uh, make us create different ideas in order to not to face the real problems that we have. So basically what these four humors are doing is to deny an external reality and create a new one parallel to the main one. So for example, there is this humor, which is the melancholic humor. This melancholic humor basically is a lot of sadness. And the people that live with that humor usually create parallel realities, like different realities that they are very, very heavy and they just see everything in a dark way, okay? So 
They do that in order to not to face their own real problems. So, uh, for example, um, we have different types of humor, of course, uh, the different moods that we have, but let's call it humor because it's the correct uh, thing for what we are talking now. Um, the different humors, um, we have, for example, one of them is the melancholic one, the other one is the flaming one, I don't know how, how do you say it, uh, and another one is the choleric, okay? So the choleric um, is one of the most used today, and I was, but the choleric, for example, you have a choleric person, is someone that has a humor to, um, that, that it's always free. Like, rah, like, like always mad with everything. That's th that humor, always mad. So the body says, I don't want to waste energy fighting with anything, any problem around. So what does this? It takes a mood that we call the dark um, sarcasm, um, sarcasm, the, light, the dark mood. <laughs> we would say when we do this heavy pose, like, like, like this kind of humor, it comes from the choleric. Because the brain says, if I laugh about this heavy thing that makes me mad, so I kind of solve it. Okay, I kind of resolve it when I am um, when I am laughing about it. In our times, in our society today, uh, we use a lot the, <coughs> the the black humor. Okay, the dark humor, and we use. The dark humor, because um, black humor, dark humor, whatever, um, we use that all around the globe because the there are so many conflicts, so many problems, so many um, wars and problems, conflicts that we have around everywhere, and we can see all of them, that um, we activate the choleric humor. We are angry all the time. As a humanity so this is why we activate the black humor okay because our brain says i cannot solve it so in somehow if i laugh about it i solve it so remember that there is another thing uh, humor basically is something that we use to survive so remember in the a few days ago we have spoken about something that also um was used to protect ourselves which is poison venom okay so that humor is the one that we have to learn to make medicine from so in order to find the medicine we have this humor which is the soul humor and the humor of the soul is to expand itself is not to survive so if if these four are the ones trying to protect me and to make me escape from the conflicts of life this other one will be the one helping me to transcend and to expand in life so this humor is the one that first of all helped me to laugh of myself is the one that allows you to laugh from your own self laugh of life and enjoy life by laughing when someone learns how to laugh from itself is when we start to connect with the soul so basically, these four humors are the ones that tries to protect you. So when you are trying to protect yourself, you won't laugh to your own weakness because you are trying to protect your weakness. So you are laughing from the outside. But when you start to learn how to laugh about yourself, you recognize that there is no weakness to protect. That the only way you can transcend that weakness is by expanding yourself. Hmm? So I hope that with this, um, 
we can understand the history of humor and how to use it. Okay. So the people that doesn't usually have humor, the people that is very serious and doesn't have humor at all, usually, <clears throat> um, usually uh, they are very weak inside because they don't have the, uh, they need nothing to feel the potential. Like like they don't want to lose the the balance of. Um, um, because they they feel weak inside, so um, that's why some people doesn't have humor. And of course, there is the opposite with um, uh, people that uh, use comedy. The comedian, for for example, that usually most of them they are very pe people that have suffered a lot. That they have a. Uh, suffering inside um, and they use the laughter as a way to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Basically, who takes life very seriously can't arrive anywhere. And the people who laugh too much, they won't be able to listen properly. So um, there were there was a time that there was a beam from the seventh dimension in a channeling that he said, um, uh, usually people, some people believe that to reach, um, to reach the enlightenment in the seventh dimension, you have to meditate a lot and to be very serious and doing this and constantly be like very straight like this. And, um, and, um, <laughs> and they said, but that's not how you reach enlightenment. Basically, from the fifth dimension, from the uh, seventh dimension, when there, when we see a human doing like this, it's like a bunch of atoms, like in this position, like this, and nothing else. So basically, this is just for balance and alignment. This is for another thing, but not for the enlightenment. So in the seventh dimension, everyone is laughing because laughter is the expansion. This is why we have to laugh much more so we every one every day now we are doing these alignments because we are trying to align ourselves but we have to mix it with some laughter too so i know that there's a lot of people in the spiritual world that they are very like serious and 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 they feel that like um like everything is must be very <clears throat> doctrinary and and so on um but that's useful for one part of the path. The doctrine, the dogma is uh, the, to be quiet and, and serious is, is useful for a part of it, for a part of the path. But then when you have to expand in the universe, the dogma will catch you, okay? Um, you have to expand and basically to feel the whole universe is basically like a, such a huge laughter with an orgasm. And you cannot control that with anything. It, ha it happens like that. So relax. <laughs> so we have to laugh a little bit more. Let's go to the alignment. Some people were asking about the talks. I, how do you call it in English? Um, obsession. Compulsive obsession, obsessive uh, disease, uh, something like that, maybe. Um, <clears throat> so that we would say is um, is basically what I explained already. Uh, it's uh, a, it's a disorder that uh, that basically is your humor trying to protect yourself from the problems that you don't know how to solve. So um, this is why uh, the brain creates like like something to protect themselves from that problem. Uh, but I explained it better in the blog. If you read the blog, you will have it more explained. Another thing about um, humor is that uh, we, we have heard about uh, a lot about the limits of humor. And there's no limits in humor because humor is a projection and perception from the soul. So 
the soul is expansion. That's the most important thing. So if it's expansion, so there's no limit. We cannot put a limit into humor. If I don't like humor, um, or some, some kind of humor, um, it doesn't mean that that humor is bad, okay? Um, it means that it's not in the same vibration as me. That's it, okay? Uh, uh, putting limits, putting limits to the humor basically is like uh, like saying that the um, mental institution, men health, many institutions um, are useful for the mental diseases or something like that. And so um, it's not like that, okay? Um, there's no limits in humor. There's only different chakras from where you express humor, okay? So uh, another, another thing of um, um, bullying, um, the, the, the concept of bullying, uh, it's very difficult to say exactly what is bullying because as the humor is there's a there's no limits in the bullying because any joke can be bullying depending on the perception of the pair of the person okay so for some people some jokes that I do with my friends is bullying for other people it's simple friends doing jokes so um it really depends what is bullying but basically what we have to understand is that we are putting today too much attention to the person that receives the bullying than the person that makes the bullying. And bullying, which is a different kind of humor, this bullying is born from the four, the, the four um, humors that are all about survival. So the person that makes the bullying is a very weak person within that needs to survive and before something happens to him, attacks. It's like an animal that attacks just in case. Okay, that's the bullying. So what we have to do is to work with the person that makes the bullying to see what are their weakness and how to solve it. Because the problem is not the bull, it's the bully. Okay, so we have to work not punishing the bully, but healing the bully. Hmm? That's a, uh, uh, an important perception. About the message from yesterday, I will speak about it tomorrow because otherwise it will be very long. The vibration for today is Va. The statement for today is I am the divine transmutation. The code for today is the fifth dimension. The dimension of masters is the projection of unity through time and space. For once the process of the material entity is done, the fifth point marks a new level, a contemplation point, the top of the pyramid of four bases, the one that sees it all. It's a plane known as heaven, or the place where guides, masters, and angels observe and guide in the process without any time or space. Close your eyes, observing only your breathing. Letting all the weight of your shoulders fall down. Breathing in, breathing out. Take a deep breath. As you breathe, take a moment to think, to imagine all the people that you know. Picture all of them around you, the closest ones, and those who are very far, the last ones, in which you can think about. The good people and the bad people, those who hurt you, and those who makes you good, all of them around you.
and I become aware that the light of the sun, the light of the I am that surrounds me is also surrounding all of them equally. I perceive the light between each one of them. With my eyes closed, as I move my head around to watch all these people, I can see different people at every place that I see, that I watch, and all of them are surrounded by the light. And now I realize that the light that is shining comes from within, from my inner body, from my own self, shining brighter on each one of those people around me. I see my brightest, my bright, shining on them, like the light in the waves of the sea. And I recognize that each one of them is a wave in this ocean. I am water. Take a deep breath and manifest. I desire to find the true humor of my soul. And for that, I descend to the depths of the soul. Take a deep breath and go deep, perceiving how the light is above and you are heading to the darkness of the ocean. I feel the pressure of the water in my body as I descend deeper and deeper. Around me, there's only darkness. Of all the people, that create the waves of my sea. And I perceive that all the pressure that I received, good and bad, positive or negative, in me, here, is just neutrality. And from here, I activate the vibration of my being. 
divine translation. Yo soy la transmutación divina. I am the divine transmutation. In the depths of my soul, I smile. Smile. Bajo la presión de todo el mundo, de todas las personas under the pressure of all the people I know under the pressure of the unconscious and the subconscious I smile smile In the name of Intaka, she was called by our energy today from the Andes mountains with the energy of the Andes to connect from the sea and the mountains their children's the new humanity. She said, you are the kids, we are the kids that have come here to transform the idea into life and for that they support us as we support them and she reminds us laugh humans laugh humans laugh humans and your laughter will be heard beyond to the eternity. Take a deep breath. I take my hands to my heart. 
And from there, I begin to press and to massage the chest and all the body coming back here and now. So thank you everyone for being there. And so this is how our emotional week on Scorpio begins. See you tomorrow at the same time as always. Bye. Adios.